to MVTI Learning Channel. I am Emily Kwasam, your Kukri Science and Calculation Instructor. We'll be treating hygiene. As caterers, we all know the importance of observing good hygiene. Good hygiene enables us to prevent food spoilage and food poisoning. By the end of the lesson, you will be able to, one, explain what hygiene is. Two, know the importance of hygiene. Three, outline the types of hygiene. And then four, explain the various types of hygiene. What are some of the practices we observe as hygiene? That is one, washing of our hands before commencement of cooking, washing of our dirty equipment after cooking, emptying of our dustbins, washing of our napkins after cooking. What is hygiene? Hygiene, this is the science and practice of observing good health. What are some of the importance of hygiene? One, it promotes good health. When you say it promotes good health, what does it mean? Promoting good health means it prevents diseases if we're able to practice hygiene. Two, it promotes high standard of cleanliness. When you wash your napkins, you bath, you tidy up your working environment, you maintain the highest standard of cleanliness. Three, promote physical fitness. When you are always neat, you are promoting fitness of your body. Four, it also prevents diseases such as chorella, typhoid, and malaria. Let's now look at the types of hygiene. One, personal hygiene. Two, kitchen hygiene. And three, food hygiene. What is personal hygiene? This is the practice of keeping the whole body clean in order to preserve good health. When you are practicing personal hygiene, you need to observe, take care of the total body from the head to your feet so that you not fall sick. Kitchen hygiene. Kitchen hygiene is the practice of maintaining high standard of cleanliness of kitchen tools and equipment as well as premises in order to preserve good health. When you are practicing kitchen hygiene, you ensure that the total equipment in the kitchen that you use for the day-to-day -day activities are entirely clean always, and your working environments are always clean before and after cooking. And after every cooking, you follow it up with scullery. Food hygiene. This is also the practice of maintaining safety food from production to consumption. This means that during the preparation of the food, so it gets to the customers, the highest standard of cleanliness should be observed. This brings us to general hygiene. We are now going to look at personal hygiene in general. This is the practice of observing personal cleanliness to preserve good health in order to avoid diseases. When you practice good personal hygiene, you are always clean and neat, and you avoid contracting diseases. Let's look at four importance of personal hygiene. One, to promote good health. When you observe good personal hygiene, you'll be prone to diseases. Two, to promote self-respect. When you observe Good personal hygiene, you respect yourself and others respect you as such. Three, to prevent bad odor. When you have a smelling body, you will drive your customers away as a caterer and then collapsing your business. Four, to prevent skin diseases and promote clear skin. Let's now look at 10 important areas on the body that requires special care so far as personal hygiene is concerned. We'll first of all look at the hair. As a caterer, before you enter the kitchen, you must make sure that your hair is clean and then you cover your hair. That is, you wear the prescribed hair cover. That is either the cap or the chef's hat. 
as a caterer. And then you avoid touching of your hair during food preparation. Two, your nose. As a caterer, in order to observe good personal hygiene practices, you have to always avoid touching the nose during cooking. And then when you want to sneeze or blow your nose, you cover your food, you go a distance, blow your nose into either a tissue or a handkerchief. When you finish, you wash your hands well, and then you return to your work. Three, your mouth. You always have to make sure that you brush your teeth at least twice a day. And then when you are coughing, you go a distance away from your cooking area or your working area. You cough into your handkerchief or a tissue. Dispose it off. Wash your hand under running water with soap. And then you wipe it with either a tissue or a napkin. And then you return back to your work. The ears. We have to also avoid touching of the ears during cooking because our fingernails will attract some of the dirt in our ears and when transferred to our food will contaminate the food. So as much as possible during cooking preparation, let all avoid touching of the ears. The hands. You always have to ensure that your hands, your fingernails are always short and neat as a caterer, and then you always wash your hand under running water up to your elbow before commencement of work. The feet, always ensure to wear the right footwear, for example, a boot or a canvas, and always make sure you wash it very well, dry it in an airy place so that it will not have bad odor. Let's then look at four appropriate kitchen clothing. One, the chef's jacket. The chef's jacket must always be durable and be able to withstand wear and tear. As the prescribed color is white and then you need to be washing it after each day's activity. Two, the apron. The apron should be of good length. It shouldn't be too short. It should be able to reach your knee so that it will prevent heat from getting into direct contact with your body during cooking. Three, the chef's hat or cap. This also prevents our hair, our hair from falling into our food during cooking. And it also prevents germs. When mistakenly your hair is itching you and you, you scrape it or you touch your hair, you don't transfer germs into the food that you are producing. It also absorbs sweat during cooking. Our footwear. Our footwear should be either boots for the male and then canvas for the female. This prevents hot liquids when accidentally pours on the feet to get into direct contact with the skin. Let us now look at five qualities of a suitable personal kitchen clothing. One, it should be protective. That is, the clothes should have the tendency to protect the body from excessive heat. Two, it should be light and comfortable. The clothing should be light in weight and not tight to enable the caterer move freely during preparation of meal. Three, it should be strong. That is, it should be strong to withstand frequent washing. Four, the material used should be washable. That is, it should be easy to wash. It should be absorbent. The material used should be able to absorb steam and sweat. This brings us to the end of personal hygiene. We will now look at kitchen hygiene. Kitchen hygiene. This is the practice of maintaining high standard of cleanliness in and around the kitchen, as well as the tools and equipment. Let's look at four importance of practicing kitchen hygiene. One, it creates a conducive working environment. That is, as you clean the work surfaces, sweep the floor, empty your bins always, 
It creates an enabling, friendly environment for you to work in the kitchen. Two, it reduces the risk of food spoilage and poisoning. That is, when you observe or practice good kitchen hygiene, it reduces the risk of food spoilage. That is, using different chopping boards to perform different actions reduces the risk of cross-contamination, thereby reducing food poisoning. Three, it promotes a quality image to customers. When customers visit your outlet and realize the place is always neat, it gives them the chance to always patronize your services. Four, it reduces damage of tools and equipment. That is, if you always wash and clean your equipment well, it prolongs the lifespan, thereby helping you to maintain cost or money. Let us now look at three essential elements that promote effective kitchen hygiene. One, good ventilation. There should be good ventilation in the kitchen. That is, enough windows to enable fresh air to enter into the kitchen and then stay air to go out so that it will create an enabling environment for people working in the kitchen to work effectively. There should be also be fumes and extractors in the kitchen to take away stay air from the kitchen. Two, good lighting. Good lighting is also important to enable the kitchen staff see whatever they are doing in terms of cleaning, to be able to clean effectively in the kitchen to promote good kitchen hygiene. Three, plumbing. There should also be enough and adequate hot and cold water to aid in the cleaning of the kitchen. That will, in totality, promote good kitchen hygiene. This brings us to the end of our lesson on hygiene. Let us then do a quick recap on what we learned. We learned about what hygiene is in general, the three types of hygiene, that is personal hygiene, kitchen hygiene, and food hygiene. We also learned about the importance of practicing these three types of hygiene. In totality, let us all preserve or observe hygiene in order to preserve good health.